Hey everyone, this is Ben back with you in the Midwest Model Shop. In today's episode, we're gonna go over a couple of things. First, we're gonna go finish up all of the detail on the hull. In the previous episode, we just painted it black and got our red bottom on. This one, we're gonna go ahead and, well, Nora's gonna go ahead and add all the detail to it with an airbrush. Then we're gonna put the yellow sheer line on that everyone seems to struggle with, and we're gonna put the uh, white area up above on the poop deck and the folk skull so you can check that out. We'll also be having another episode of Tales from the Titanic. And we want to say thank you to everybody who is responding and participating in the um, community ship build. Uh, we talked about it in the first video. Yes. Um, send us an email and we will send you the address so that you can send a painted figure to us to add to the Titanic when it's complete. Yes, and just so we're clear, we are not providing the figures. So if you have an extra one and you want to send it, that's awesome. Uh, it, it's just too much back and forth, obviously, for us to send you one. So that about takes care of it. Let's get into the build. All right, everybody, welcome back. So what I've done is busted out the airbrush and I've got some flat black paint. And all I did was go around the hall and kind of touch up. We used the big air cans before and I just wanted to make sure that we got everything kind of a nice even flat black tone and we're set. So now what I'm gonna do is we need to put on our yellow stripe and we need to put on our white areas up here, but really, and then we need to we need to weather the red also on the black. So working through all this in my head, the next logical step is to work in details on the black part of the hull because then we can mask off above and below and we're not having to pull more masking off as we go. So there's just a flat black on here, everything's nice and even, and now what we're gonna do is start adding just really subtle details. And we're gonna have Nora do this. Nora has zero airbrushing skills. She's never done this before. I have a Posh double action, or I'm sorry, an Iwata uh, NS double action airbrush. She's never used this before either. I'm gonna give her a crash course on how to do it. I know a lot of you have uh, a lot of people are building this Titanic model as their first model back in like a long time and as their first model ever. If Nora can operate a double action airbrush, you can too. So we're going to get her in here. You got that right. Uh, that's right. <laughs> we're going to get her in here and what we're going to be doing is adding really subtle highlights. So the next color we're playing with here uh, is actually graphite and Nora described it as very sparkly and if you don't have graphite, that's fine. What you could do is just put some black, flat black paint in your airbrush, add a couple drops of white just to lighten it slightly. And what we're gonna be doing is highlighting things. All the little rivets that pop up, all the little high edges of the plates that are out. Uh, the hull plating on the Titanic goes out, in, out, in. And that's how they describe it in their, um, their manuals. So uh, what we're gonna be doing is adding highlights to that. So the idea is that at a distance, kind of when Nora backs up, everything's black. It's, it's just going to look black, just like it, it does now. And then as you come in, whoa, there's rivets here. There's plates here. There's little details going on. And each of those you want to be kind of accented. So the idea is striking that balance between it looking good and just kind of monochromatic at a distance. And then when you get up close, there's a lot of detail. So uh, we're going to start that. I'm gonna do we're gonna do a lot of like zoomed in up close so you can see what's happening and then Nora will tell you another story about some of these crazy people that were on this ship because there's just all this all this all this drama. There's drama all the time. It's real life drama. It's not even fake drama. You know like the oh fly it's yeah. So let's let's get into it. Today's tale begins with the couple by the name of Michel and Marcel Navratil of Nice, France. Michel was a native Slovakian who moved to Nice and became a tailor. He met 16-year-old Marcel Corretto in 1906. A year later, they married. Well, wouldn't you know it, they weren't quite the love match they thought they'd be. She being artistic and emotional, Michel the more practical and deliberate of the two. To make matters worse, relatives claimed she was cheating on him and squandering his money. The only thing worse than a squanderer is a philanderer, if you ask me. In the few short years they were together, they had two sons, Michelle Jr. and Edmund. Sadly, their union ended in divorce. In April 1912, Marcel brought her sons to spend Easter with their father at his home in Nice. When she returned to pick them up, she was shocked to find he had kidnapped them. 
He booked second class tickets under the name Louis F. Hoffman, and he called the boys Lolo and Louis. Michel had vague memories of their trip, memories including playing on the forward deck with his brother and eating eggs in the second class dining room. On the night of April 14th, the Navratil boys were asleep when their father woke them to dress them in warm clothes and take them on deck. He proceeded to help other passengers until collapsible lifeboat D became available. Second officer Charles Lighttaller was helping the boys and others board when Michael Sr. whispered something to his eldest son. The boy turned to Lighttaller and saluted him. Collapsible lifeboat D left the Titanic at 2.05 a.m. A fellow survivor, Margaret Hayes, took the boys in and brought them to her New York City apartment. Everyone, including their mother, became aware of the orphans of the Titanic after Hayes gave an interview to the newspapers. Marcel was given free passage from Nice to New York City and she swiftly collected her children and returned to France. Shortly after, Michel Sr.'s body was found floating in the Atlantic. Edmund suffered ill health as a result of being a prisoner of war in World War II. He was an interior designer and architect until he died at the age of 43. Michel became a student of philosophy and later in life shared the words his father whispered to him that faithful night. My child, when your mother comes for you, as she surely will, tell her that I loved her dearly and still do. Tell her that I expected her to follow us so that we might all live happily in the peace and freedom of the new world. Michel died in 2001, the last male survivor of the Titanic. Okay, so Nora's tidying up some little last details, uh, well, items we found on the hall. We're going to show you what we did with the paint, but now that the graphite's done, which is just the lighter color, we're going to switch back to a flat black. And what I'm going to try and show you here, I didn't really clean the airbrush out. I don't know why you're going to see that. Uh, the graphite is sucked out of there, but there's still little remnants left. And then we're going to go ahead and add the flat black back in. So yeah, they're going to mix together a little bit. And that's okay, because we're looking to mix together kind of the results of our paint along here. So before we do that, though, I want to show you what we got done with that first pass. None of this has to be perfect, as you can see, because my sections kind of look like Winnie did it. Um, but basically just getting those, <laughs> just getting the um, layers on. I've never done this before and I'm seeing the process. So it's like layer after layer after layer and covering and going over those other colors is really just going to give it dimension when it's all said and done. Yep. All right, let's hit on the next step. Okay, we're back in action uh, and the compressor's run, I'm sorry. But what we've switched to is flat black now and we're subtly dialing down some of the intensity, especially this is our port side of the black, just to take some of the glittery part of the shimmer out of the graphite and go to that lighter color. If you were doing this at home, maybe skip out of the graphite and go with just like a really dark, dark gray or a lighter black. We're still gonna come back with a, a black with um, a couple drops of white in it to highlight some of the middles of some of these panels and just kind of give more of an even shown tone. Uh, the lights, just so you know, we have super bright lights on uh, helping us see from an angle like this what's going on here. You show these lights off and you lose a lot of this. Um, and Nora's been doing a great job here this whole time. Even though Nora doesn't know what she's doing. <laughs> yeah, but shes you've been doing this, so I was screwing around my phone. What were you saying before? Uh, so, yeah, you were 100% not paying attention on your phone, and I was 100% turned loose with this air gun, and it doesn't look bad. Like, yeah. because you're just glaring and, and adding colors over other colors, if you're just giving it dimension it's almost impossible to mess it up. And the big thing is, because I have seen a few individuals who've had catastrophes, on, and again, it's bright over here because we have a big bright light over here, uh, have had catastrophes on their halls, and they want to do the paint over again. And the reason that happens is you're putting on too thick. We put very light coats on, uh, when we put this down and we're putting very light coats on right now if anything 
kind of was to go awry, we could just paint over this entire thing all over again with flat black and start over. So, so I think what was really cool is Ben explained to me to be very directional with the um, with the graphite color, the lighter color, which I described as having shimmer in it. And now that we're coming back with the flat black, so I was really close with the shimmer and very um, deliberate in application. And now we're coming back with the flat black and I'm holding the spray gun further away and it's dispersing that paint in a larger pattern. So what we're getting are like all of these little high points are highlighted. They're, the, the light's gonna pick them up and give a lot of dimension. You're gonna be able to see all these individual, um, what do you call these? Uh, they're, they're panels. Panels, that's what I was gonna say, but I wasn't plating, sure if that was plating. Yeah, you're gonna see all those individual plates and I said it's kinda like makeup when you highlight your face. You highlight your cheekbones and your brow bones and all of that and you're basically doing the same thing with the ship right all you guys when you do your makeup just apply it the same here process here yeah yeah to your ship even That's though i have what... no makeup on right now right right <laughs> all right here we go continuing on okay back with another quick little update so the black's on we've done our little touch-ups and i've gone ahead and, and applied another color of red to the bottom of the hall here for you all to check out. And it is Rote RLM 23. It's a very coral color. Now, what I did is I just dusted it over the entire thing. So it's a little splotchy and it definitely lighted, lightened things up a little bit. I know it's kind of hard to tell the differentiation uh, with the yellow tape here. Um, I just want to try and avoid masking it too many times. The reason I did this is the there's debate over what color this was. Was it just red? Um, there's a picture, a color photo of the wreck that's very light. It's almost a pinkish color. There's arguments that it's faded. There's arguments that no, it didn't fade. And that's actually the color that it's supposed to be. Um, I'm going to go ahead and probably add another color a little bit more red and just a little bit darker on top of it but I wanted you all to see this in case you're like I love that that's exactly what I wanted so if you saw in the previous video we got our base coat of uh, pimento red on it and then we went with this flat rote on top uh, I'll, I'll pull up the colors that I'm working with here all right, so the next color I have is this uh, Russian tanker red or Russian marker red, and then I've got a really dark British crimson red. Obviously, this is way too dark, but I would just be dusting these colors over. This has what I would describe as a little bit more orange in it than what you see here, and from a distance, uh, I feel like I feel like this actually might be all right. Gotta ask Nora, she'll have an opinion. But I wanted you guys to see all this before I changed anything else. All right, so we'll press on here. Okay, here we are. So I went ahead and uh, threw on this Russian marker red and it went from very um, salmon pinkish hue to a very orange hue, like the orange that you see here. So. I did that to both sides and I like the direction we're going because it darkened things up just a little and I went back, this is just Model Masters flat red and I dusted the whole hall with the red after the marker red. So I probably have arrived back close to where we may have been starting off at maybe. Maybe not, I don't know. You could be the judge. But I like that there's a lot of modulation in the tone. And I like that, we'll turn it sideways here to get the light to change. I like that it's not just red. I like that there's some lighter pinkish hues. I'm going to say that generically. And that it, you know... T to me, it looks interesting. It's not. I guess I'm trying. I'm struggling with my words here. It looks kind of like the historic pictures we saw 
that or the the writings that implied that hey it wasn't just red it was more of a pinkish color we saw the pictures from the wreck or if you've looked online you could find examples of it being like very pink looking uh, but then we've also got our red going which is more along the lines of our traditional photographs I feel like we've landed somewhere in between and I'm I'm happy with it I gotta ask Nora what she thinks because if she doesn't like it then I'll be back down here redoing the whole thing but uh, the big takeaway from all this is pick something that's aesthetically pleasing to your eye that you're happy with it's your model it's not anybody else's it's yours and if someone tries to tell you no the hull was this color for sure I know it they're lying there's there's so many conflicting pieces of information and, and the truth of the matter is nobody knows so just do what you think is best and what makes you happy and uh, looks good and I'm, I'm pretty stoked about this so now we got to press on to doing a yellow line and our white areas up on top and yeah all the other things that happen to go along with finishing the ship all right pressing on okay so now we're moving on to the shear line which i have masked off here uh, it's the yellow area that goes along the hall here first off i went online and looked up how big is the shear line supposed to be and at its thickest what i found out scale is supposed to be 1.3 millimeters that's here amidship and then it actually gets narrower towards the front which is teeny 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 tiny so i just went ahead and used uh two tapes here so ultimately what you're seeing is the tamiya but i want to zoom in here all right you might be able to see that basically you've got two rows of rivets right here if you take the tape and go up to the bottom of the top row of rivets that gets your spacing uh, real close to being right As you can see that works out pretty good so i went ahead and ran that around the whole hall uh, over here you'll see a white if i move in a little bit kind of a white line of tape i had this eighth inch uh vinyl tape that i tried it was pretty good i wanted it to conform over the elastic or over the rivets i'm sorry and it, it kind of does in an elastic -y fashion but it it wasn't it moved very easily so what that meant was i had a hard time keeping it straight and i used it along the starboard side here and kind of gave up on it but the area it did shine on was in the stern now this is supposed to be thinner in the stern uh, when you go around and from the side it kind of thins out I, th I think it might have even gotten a little bit larger uh underneath here as i went around we might monkey with that later i might just leave it anyway that's how i masked the whole thing off uh there is a lip right here on the bow and stern that should not be yellow but it's hard to mask that off so i decided well that's okay i'll mask down to the top of the lip that lip will end up getting painted yellow but then i'll mask over the yellow up to the bottom of that lip that protrudes out and go white over the top of it so it's going to end up working out okay anyway so what i'm going to do now is start getting paint on and speaking of paint i have two different yellows i have insignia yellow which i really like and chrome yellow which is a little bit lighter this has a little bit more gold in it uh we're going over black so i think i'm gonna go with the insignia yellow i think that's gonna end up looking nice pro tip about yellow paint i didn't know this i've always had trouble painting yellow tape yellow paint if you want your yellow to turn out really really yellow like without trouble whatever you're going to paint yellow paint it white first prime it white and then go over it with yellow and you'll have no trouble at all uh this is black i'm okay with that i want it to have a deeper warmer kind of goldish hue also uh this stripe is extremely thin and at first i was like i don't know if i like that i don't know if that's going to be right and then i kind of realized after a little bit that you know what it's actually pretty cool uh that it's so thin like that so i think that it's going to be all right and yeah let's just get some paint on and see if we can't get this pulled off and take a look at here before i have to go to work press it on okay here we are back at the bow with the tape peeled off it's been uh about five days since this was painted, I had to take a little work trip here. And this is how our yellow stripe turned out. Uh, pretty good. So 
let's just move along here a little bit and we'll take a couple of little close-up shots of what's going on Let me get down here so here's where the rivet detail comes into play and as you can see by going right between the lines and, and it's not perfect we're zoomed in real close so everyone can see uh, but I did get good coverage it worked out really well I'm pleased with this now I also realize that some of you who built the kit ahead of me might be screaming there's a piece of plastic that drops down right on top of here and there's going to be a seam and that seam might need some fixing don't you worry about that we will address it when we get to that point we've still got quite a ways to go here so anyway I just wanted to show you that this is what the line looks like right here and if we take a look over here in the back it turned out really nice it gets a little thick coming around the rear here uh, I might end up masking over this I might just leave it I think I think it looks really good so that's where we're at uh, it's time to press on with masking over all this so that we could paint the white um, there is one thing I want to talk about though first before we get to that spot okay this is on the aft portion of the ship the poop deck would be up here see this raised edge and how it comes to an end right here abruptly and then we have the we'll call it gold or yellow going up on top this lip that protrudes out is supposed to be white so i'll end up masking up to the bottom of it and it'll be white going up but then we have this awkward spot right here where it yeah the, the yellow goes up on top i think the top of this ends up being painted white or brown uh, i'm not sure yet we may end up very carefully masking straight across here and putting the tiniest sliver of white across to make that transition work out but for the time being uh, we're going to mask up to the top of this so this yellow rim will be exposed and we'll be painting white up above it and we'll have to address this part later so yeah all right let's get painting now well, let's get masking we're going to use xf2 flat white by tamia for the white uh the model masters white that i use tends to not spray well in large quantities it dries up too fast this stuff sprays fantastic you just have to use the Tamiya thinner with it. So it's readily available in large quantities. Uh, this is what we're going to do for the white. The thing I don't like about it, and all acrylics for that matter, is that it scratches easy and it just doesn't hold up. We're going to try and remedy that by doing a uh, flat lacquer clear over everything to kind of seal it in and uh, add some rigidity to the paint because otherwise it's just going to be a mess. All right, let's paint it and then take a look. Okay, here we go. Here's the results of the white paint. I had to put up a little black piece of paper behind it so uh, it would show up well. But this is the bow. This is the Tamiya XF2 white. I think it looks fantastic. We're going to go with it. As you can see right here, I've got a little spot there and a little spot there on the yellow that needs to be touched up. But uh, that shouldn't be a big deal. Let's move the ship and camera around so you can see some of the other parts here. All right, here's a shot of the bow. And what I wanted to show off here is how the yellow line turned out really balanced on the top and the bottom. And we'll move over here a little bit to the port. And you can see it just looks nice running all the way down. Uh, let's take a look at the stern. Alright, here we are on the stern, starboard side. Looks sharp. I'm going to take the camera off of here and move it around so that you can see the back. Uh, but this is this is looking good. This is what we want to see. All right, I threw this black piece of paper up there so that we don't get blocked out by all the lights. But this is the shot. This is what it looks like up there. I think that's really nice. The yellow might be a little bit wide, but honestly, I don't think it's a problem because when you come up to here, it thins out quite a bit. So. That's good. All right, we've got our white on. Time to press on to the next part. All right, next order of business. I want to protect what I've painted on the hull so far, especially those of you who are used to using acrylics. You know that it scratches easy, it's not strong, and that's why I hate acrylics because enamel paint is a lot more robust. So I did this. 
This is the stand. Uh, this is a great thing to test stuff on if you're not sure. This is the uh, Tamiya White sprayed directly onto the plastic and left to dry. I then clear coated it. I'll zoom in a little bit here. You can see that it's fine and if I take my nail and I scratch on it, it's holding up just fine. How did I do that? Elclad 2 lacquer clear coat, flat. I love this stuff. Um, paid $8.25 a long time for it, long time ago for it. It is a lacquer finish, it is flat when you, in it, yes, it's fuzzy looking. When you let this sit for a long time, there will be like this iceberg looking thing that builds up in the bottom here and it'll be all clear up on top. Don't stir it, just shake the heck out of it and you might have to shake it for 10 or 15 minutes until that all goes away and mixes up. Then you're set. Take this out, dump it straight into your air gun, and paint over it, and you're going to have a nice protective layer uh, to protect the ship from scratches and things. It's a flat finish. You can paint right over the top of it. Uh, this is great. It's meant for L-clads, which, you know, once you put those metalizer paints on, they're super fragile, and you got to have something strong over top of it, which is why you use this. So uh, use good ventilation. Don't breathe this stuff. I'm going to put this on top of there and press on next thing. Okay, so here we go. We're going to start working on the steam winches. These were made by Harlan and Wolf. And uh, this is in the book, uh, Titanic the Ship Magnific Magnificent. So one thing I want to point out here before we get going is there are one, two, three, four vertical supports that hold the main shaft that runs through uh, to the rollers. We will not be seeing that on our kit piece. Over here we have the Sunderland Forge and Engineering Company LTD. This, this is the company that made all the electric winches that were on board the Titanic and everything, so uh, we'll worry about those later. All right, over here, this is what we're going to be working on. This is inside of the Pontos instructions. We need to make three of these steam winches, so I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that now. Okay, first thing we're going to do is start out with piece uh, C26 and C27. Basically, they're just getting glued together. I just put... A couple little dots of CA glue on here and they do have to line up this is my grease pencil and put them on like so and what that's giving you here is see the little drop down area in there those little grooves it's a positive point uh, to go ahead and glue your next pieces to that's that's what that's all about now we have piece F47, this is the main body uh, of the whole thing, and this is hard to uh, fold because it's only connected right here and right here. This, this side gets folded up and over into here, and same on the other side, and then the whole thing gets folded down the middle. So, yeah, and it also deforms a little bit during the change process, but I just grab some tweezers and... Flip it up half right, about like yay, and then again, gonna need a little bit of CA glue. And I found that I had to do some touching up uh, with the CA glue once these two halves were together. There we go. And by touching up, I mean I just clamp one end, and I'll clamp the other end like that so that it sets up uh, and then unfortunately there's a tendency for this thing to kind of come out of plumb a little bit but anyway get both halves folded together alright so this is the piece and it's folded in half uh, the way you need to be and the big thing is on the bottom here when you flip it over you want to try and get both of these to be parallel to one another as much as possible because they drop down right here it goes into that groove just like you see and so it's really important that everything lines up all right so this is just dipped in CA glue and pretty liberally and ooh, that's a little too much <laughs> that's more than I wanted but you just drop it into position and you're good to go all right next up we've got I think this is called one of the whip ends this is one of the big ones and they get there's there's four on this thing total but they get this little uh, detail placed on the end right there it sits in in a recess so I'm you're seeing it straight on which is kind of confusing but it drops down in there 
just gonna grab a tiny bit of CA and get it touched on both sides of this. There is uh, an up and down of these little ends, so like right there I just flipped it over accidentally. There it is, the right way. And do the best you can to get that centered. It's like we're <laughs> It's like we're making a wheel for a car and we're going to put the rubber wheel on top of it. So that's what it looks like. And then you just do that for the other one. And then there's two little ones where you do the same thing. The two other ones go on the end. I'll show you that here in a second. Okay, here are the other two whip ends. And what you need to know is this one uh, is hollow and it fits onto the end of this one. Now there is, I think you can see it there, a real tiny little microscopic piece it looks like you could insert into here like so and it'll stop and that is true the thing is I've discovered is you actually need it to go uh, further in and so this hole it's really little there needs to be drilled out in fact you'll need to drill several things out so I'm using this uh, drill bit right here that's a 15S503 1.5 I think it's in my little kit it's the blue one anyway you want to get that and make sure you drill this out first so you can put those two ends together uh, and then we got to put our little uh, whip ends on here so let me let me drill it out and then I'll put the little pieces on okay here we are sorry the furnace is back on uh, so grab our little ends and these these ones are a little bit different because they don't they don't sit down in the hub they actually sit on the top end so it goes like this right on the top you just got to get it centered up like so and this is the piece that you end up with and then you do it again for this one again after after you drill ream this out and drill it out so that you can make sure the two pieces go together and I just put a tiny little bit of CA glue on here Just like that and you're all set these these are really small um, there's one cent there's a dime five pence from the UK they're they're a little bit small so anyway uh, moving on so this little shaft uh, has man I don't even know if you can make it out there is a tiny tiny little step right here and we're going to put together some big gears and those gears will slide onto that step and they will stop right here which seems to be just about perfect for how this goes together but you need to double check it uh, I actually ran into trouble on an earlier one where I had to sand this down just a little bit and then it would install better so you want to double check that um, before you move on I'll show you what I'm talking about so here's your piece and this will end up in camera here yeah it'll end up sliding through here like this to the other side but as you can see it's stopped it's stuck on me and I've reamed these out to make sure that it will go all the way through turn the angles so you can see what I'm saying there but it doesn't quite work so I'm just gonna take this out of here and I'm gonna run a little sanding stick around there to make sure it slides all the way through this little uh, bracket, the housing, like it's supposed to. So that can happen to you. Just sort of run the stain stick around it real quick and it's, it's no big deal. Okay, so now we've got these four gears here that I cut out and they're really flat and they all go together to make one big gear. And so what I do is grab the, one of your shafts that you had earlier, the um, whip ends, and it helps if you can throw it in a tweezer like this so you can kind of hold it all together and then uh, yeah we'll just start putting the whole thing together so I just grab one of these and and they are the gears are directional if I flip it over 
See right there, there's a flat side, it's really boring. So I'll start with this one. Flat side goes down. Oh, I forgot. Glad I showed you this. See how it won't go on? This is what you need that little drill bit for. Just take your, I guess, 175, whatever it is, this blue one. I'll put it in the shot here as best I can. And you just run it through until it catches. And that tiny little reaming out is all you need. And it slides right on. There's no trouble. Just like that. Okay, so now these are all drilled out. Take a little bit of CA glue and I just place it on the outside edge. And this is a flat piece. So I'll put the flat end down facing it. In other words, the geared the finish side up and then you got a second there to line up the spokes I'm trying to do this under the camera so I could see and if you don't get it perfect and you make a mistake don't worry about it because this is going to be almost impossible to see when you're all done so like that and then just squish the ends together so now, if I turn it this way, you see it's starting to get a little bit thicker. And then we're just going to repeat. Alright. Squish it a little. You might be able to see here, it's not absolutely perfect, but it's pretty good. And then we've got this nice wide gear here that we're going to use. Okay, moving on to the next part. Okay, uh, this is where things get complicated. And I... I don't know if you saw in the picture before, there are two sets of gears. I made the second one the same way that I made the first one. No need to repeat showing how to do that. This is where things get hard and uh, tricky, especially to show you on camera. So this shaft, the small one, this gear, we'll call it pulley, whip end assembly, needs to slide through here like so. All right easy peasy but this gear needs to end on end up installed on there too to the far right side also right on here and then we'll take that little guy and glue it on the end here make sure you've drilled everything out so that it fits together or you're going to have a lot of trouble so i'm going to try to do this on camera so that you can see what I'm talking about here. Drop this down, push, and try and get everything to line up on the other side. Now, if you have major, major trouble with things not working, oh, there is a fit issue that's a problem. Um, I think you can see right there on the camera, there's this bar that runs across right here. It hits those gears and it causes a fit issue. And it is super fragile and tiny. So getting this to all work uh, can be difficult. But there we go, lucked out. And I slid it through. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to press... that whip end all the way down so it hits and then we'll grab this little gear and slide it down to this side and snug it up now you may have noticed that this part that little metal gold bar right there bent a little bit that's okay it, it fits really tight but this is what you end up with there and it looks really nice um, there is a big piece of metal that goes over the top of this gear. We're gonna don't don't pre-install that. We're gonna worry about that later because it causes all kinds of trouble if you pre-install it. Uh, so now, grab this, turn it on its side. Little dot of CA glue right here. Drop our other whip end into position. And it's got a little play in it. 
so I'm going to make sure that it lines up straight. Yeah, it looks it looks pretty good. Let's see the camera focuses there. So it's all pretty blinging bright. So now now things get now things get extra hard. So in these three spots right there, there and there, there are these little uh, tripod shaped things. You just bend them in half and they glue and drop down right in there. And that allows for these other two whip ends in their shaft to go into position basically right here. And right in this space will go the other gear. It'll fit in here like so. And yes. So let's let's bend those pieces together. It's just part F46. It's a little triangle. I'll show you that here. This is a little bracket I was just talking about. There's a flat side right here. It looks like that. Make sure you fold it that way. Like so. I'm sorry, it's really hard to keep this in focus. I have to basically set the thing on the full, on the ground here on my mat, put a little CA glue in it for it to keep it in focus. If I pick it up at all so you guys can see, well, sorry, so that I can put it together, we're just going to smash the two ends together here. Uh, it comes out of focus because it's too close to the camera. And I'll just pinch it together with tweezers like that, let it dry. And like I said, there's three of them. You're going to need those three. And you want to fold it the way that I said because see those three little bumps that are sticking out? Those get placed into the base of the whole winch. So it's important that you fold it the right way. Okay, so here's your winch. Uh, take your piece, dip it in some CA glue, and come and drop it down in the spot. And then... Uh, from your guys' angle, it's a little hard to see, but you want to make sure, as best as you can, that it's going straight up and down. And it's okay, I still got a little bit of split right there for my fold. Don't worry about that. Worry about getting it straight up and down. Uh, and then this next one, it's a little tricky because it slides in right up against that gear. You can see that. I'll show you when we're finished. It's really important. There's a there's a uh, cover that goes on the gear. Don't put that cover on. If you do, you'll have trouble getting that piece to fit right there. That actually worked out really well. Okay, here's the last one. And again, I'm checking from the side that they are straight up and down. All right, give those a second to dry. In fact, I'll take a little brush with a little bit of accelerator and just flood this area so that those set up really well. I don't want them going anywhere. Now the fun part. So as I mentioned earlier, you have to take one of these whip ends with the shaft, run it through here, and it goes all the way up and it stops. This one actually stops just shy of the middle one. And that that works out okay. Um, it'll be okay for what we're doing here. On this one, you have to put that uh, gear. Now on the opposite side, it just comes, it's, it's real simple. It's just the opposite. They go through and it actually reaches the middle one without any trouble and it stops right there and you're done. Now there's a little bit of a gap. Well, I guess I keep bumping the camera, I'm sorry. There's a little bit of a gap right there. You could you could trim the metal off or you can squish this up right underneath there and, and you'll be okay. Um, in fact, that one works out. I'm going to I'm going to glue that one in right now. It slid through. I'll just drop a little CA glue on the seam on the the joint and we're going to call that good. Now 
Again, I'm gonna try and do this without shaking the whole planet. Start this one, get it about to yay. And I think I'm gonna have to turn this, yeah, so I can see what I'm doing. There we go. Just get it on, just get it on the shaft like that. Okay, now, now we're looking good. So it can wiggle around on the shaft, slide it, slide it back over here like that so that, um, got some room to work. I'm going to put some CA glue right down here in this point. This spot is really important because this is supposed to be uh, a, a through shaft that connects the gears to the same spot. I'm going to slide that big gear over to meet and there we go. You want it, wants to, you want it to look like it's going straight through and then when we pick it up, you know, when we look on the end there, you want it going straight against out of focus here. You want it to look like it's going straight through. This this gear is not glued yet. And we'll end up torquing it over just a hair. So it meets. We'll glue here to lock this in. We'll glue right here to lock these gears in together. So the whole thing looks okay. Okay. So there you are. We have almost the whole thing complete. Uh, and, and I'll get close-ups and stuff when we're done. So now that this is done, there are little metal covers that go right over the top of these gears. And they come as little tiny little thin sheets. Okay, I moved the camera. See way down here, these two tiny little strips of pH, they're really small. Uh, you need to anneal them, and I'm afraid someone doesn't know what that means. So, grab it with a piece of your tweezer, get your lighter or torch, get it going, and see that color change? I'll go real dark and purple like that. Do that both of these give it a second it'll be hot switch and make sure you get this other end right here okay and what that will do is it'll make this metal not flingy it it'll bend and stay see how that just bends like that do that to both pieces it's real important okay so now we're going to try it from I'm going to try videotaping from this angle so the first and easiest thing to do is take your thin little strip that you've got here and we want to start with the gear closest to the outside so and this is actually man this is a lot harder to do than a lot harder to show you with the camera going than you would think but basically take your little thin tiny strip and on one end of it put a blob of CA glue take some tweezers and drop it down into that gear like that and then while I'm using the camera to look backwards here straighten it out like that so it's gonna fall and fold straight over our gear this way but you need that CA glue to set up and you need it to be fairly strong so drop some accelerator down in there put some accelerator on your gear this is where you kind of gotta start hoping for the best a little bit okay now the idea is that this metal we're in focus there is soft enough that it'll roll right over maybe uh, on the other side so I'm gonna grab some CA glue and glop it onto the back of this piece of metal and really what's going to keep it in place and I'm, I'm going to use these tweezers here to hold this piece of metal 
and we're just going to go like that. And really what's keeping it in place is the fact that the metal wants to conform to the shape that you've provided. And then I'm going to squeeze this end here. And that actually was halfway okay. It's not the best job. Let me see if I could straighten it out. Okay, there we go. That's not too bad. And I'm, I'm telling you guys to do it this way because I've tried it other ways and uh, ended up with results that weren't great. Okay, so now this gets really tricky. This next piece is actually too big. And the best thing to do is to cut it off right about here. So I don't, I don't know, is that a sixth of it? Get, get rid of about one centimeter here, about three millimeters, whatever that works out to. Uh, an eighth of an inch, cut, cut that off. All right, now that it's cut, I found that it's easiest to kind of preform this thing, and I'm reaching over the top backwards here. This is really awkward, but uh, let's see if this works. If I stick it down in here so it's caught, whoop, it went flying, I got it. There we go. If I stick it down so it catches on that gear behind it, Again, this is incredibly difficult to do like this. I can push it around and pretty much get it to the shape we want. See that? So now I'm going to take it off and push it in on itself just a little bit more. And let me work it round here with a, I'm going to use like a grease pencil. It's a smaller diameter, a little bit of reset. I reworked the shape of this to be a little bit closer to exactly what we wanted. A little more CA glue. Uh, if you all could cross your fingers. We'll take this. Drop it right in the top. Let me take a look at it. Okay. Okay. How's that look? That's what we're going for right there. Okay. There's three of them because you have to make three of them. This is what they look like uh, when they're all finished. And so... If you do one, you'll have practice, and you'll be better at the second one, which means you'll be better at the third one. And by the time you do the third one, you'll be really good at it, but by then you'll, all, you'll be done. And I say that because I think the quickest I could probably whip one of these up is an hour. So you're looking at the better part of a day right here in terms of trying to get all of this done. But I think it's worth the effort, and here's the reason why. This is the Pontos kit. Here is the kit one. I went ahead and threw it together uh, just so you could see the difference. And yeah, I mean, it's substantial, right? I mean, there's 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 pretty much no comparison. Uh, but they are kind of the same shape, right? And I think the thing is is that. If you were to paint these up, it wouldn't really matter. Now, well, and we are going to paint them up. Uh, I do want to say that if you do build the kit out of the box, don't be upset that your kit part doesn't look like this. You need to be proud of this. This thing I threw together kind of fast. It requires a whole bunch of uh, sanding and working with the plastic to try and even get it to be halfway straight. You also could go ahead and add some styrene and stuff to it to try and dress it up a little bit to be... Uh, more closely matching the ones from Pontos. The other thing you got to remember is when these are all finished, uh, we're going to be looking at them from really far away. I mean, I'm zoomed way in right now. Uh, you know, the closest someone might be is this far away from it. And I think that y you could see what I'm getting at. At this distance, we're starting to merge together here as, as looking like the same thing. So the next issue is uh, we have to paint them up. Now I'm just going to summarize this real quick with we're going to go with green. Now 
the reason I said that is in the, the Ship Magnificent book says they are supposed to be black, but uh, there was a great article that came out recently that strongly suggests that these were painted green. So let me grab the color green that we're going to use, get these shot up, and uh, I'll show you what the end result is. All right, so I have this Tamiya Deep Green XF26. This is the color that I chose to use to paint the machinery with, and I'm going to go ahead and show you what it looks like. Uh, it's it's This is a nice dark green that I think does a pretty good job of mimicking what dark green machinery was painted like back then. All right, sorry the furnace is running again, but here's our finished product. I think they look pretty sharp. This is with the green paint applied. Uh, they look really good. So I went ahead also, we'll zoom out here for a second, and I painted up the kit provided part. And for, for stars here, let's just look at it from back here, okay? It looks good. I mean, from this distance, it's fine. It has the general shape, and if you don't have the Pontos or K aftermarket kit, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. You're going to see it at a distance. Obviously, as you close in, there's a huge difference between the, the two, but that's, that's just the way it is. So anyway, I think these things look really great. Uh, there's only one other comparison in the make, and that would be uh, the third option out there if you have the KA provided uh, part. And I happen to have access to one for a uh, commission build, so let me go ahead and pull that out. All right, here is the piece with the K uh, parts on it. This is basically our steam uh, winches right here. Now, I'm not going to pop them off because I'm not ready to yet, but basically, at a distance, here are the winches with the gears and everything on them, and then uh, the whipping ends are over here that you'd have to attach. So, let's zoom in here, take a look, and you can see they're very detailed. Now there's some differences in the shape uh, from each each one, but generally speaking, they're awesome. Um, the advantage to these, besides being ready to go, you know, just cut them out, cut off the whipping ends, glue them on, you're ready to go. Uh, take your time. What are we gonna say? Ten minutes tops for each of those versus spending when you are on your A game an hour uh, putting together the ones from uh, Pontos. So let's slide these over here. Here we go, zooming in, and I think you can see the differences. I, I realize, no, I haven't painted them, it's a little hard to tell, and it'd be nice if I just took this off and put them together and painted them, but uh, I'm not quite there yet with these pieces, so they're gonna stay on the sprue. But that's what you've got, and you know, again, that's the kit provided part from Trumpeter. So here we go, there's all three variants. There's your KA back here, Pontos and the kit. I think they look, with the exception of this one, I mean, right now with the green, I keep thinking of those army uh, army figures that you get when you're kids to play with, the little green men. But anyway, there they are. I think we're all set. Uh, both the K option and the Pontos options are outstanding. Don't feel bad if this is all you get. It totally works and is a good piece. Um, we get down the road, I might give that a little bit of a wash in the gears later just to dress it up a little bit uh, once it's installed on the folk school. But for now, this will do it. Anyway, I hope you guys have all enjoyed watching this video. Thank you very much, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Are we live? We are live. Good, because I have some things that I want to talk about. <laughs> some grievances? It's louder than the key, Alright, are you ready? Because we're just rolling here. Yes. Yes, yes. What do you want to say? Oh, yeah. Just take your time. Yeah, but you're starting. You always start. I know. And I was waiting until you're done. Yeah. Okay, ready? Sure. Alright, let's look the same as the